You're Mary Poppins. How the heck did that happen? <laughs> Mary Poppins. I don't know. She sort of just like came together, I guess, in some weird way. Did you tell your agent, look, I'm looking for scripts that have dancing penguins. Yeah. Any come up, you let me know. I'm in. I'm in. Um, yeah, that was sort of a mandatory request. What a delicious character, really. Heaven to play. Yeah. I only want to be Mary Poppins for the rest of my life. I can imagine. Sort of like, what do I do after this now? My favourite parts of Mary Poppins' character, dare I say it, are okay. her haughty moments. Good. Where she gets a bit of dust. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Do you have a favourite? She doesn't like dirt. She does not like it. Well, we have to see what can be done about that. Do I have favourite moments? Like mannerisms on that kind of... Well, I, quite, I do quite like the vanity. It is wonderful to see you. Yes, it is, isn't it? I mean, really self-indulgent vanity. It just makes me laugh so much. And I think she's terribly rude. Close your mouth, please, Michael. We are still not a codfish. And I like that too. You know, she just, she doesn't care. I mean, my sister was saying to me last night at the premiere, she likes it when I'm waiting at the bank and I want to see Michael Banks. And this package guy rudely interrupts me. And she said, your face is like, it's all the stuff that I think British people find really funny, you know. How dare you. Speaking of penguin dancing, what's the trick to that? Because, stop me if I'm wrong, they may not actually have been there. They were not there. It was like a tennis ball or a very, very small dancer in a green screen suit. No, I couldn't possibly. D flat major. That must have been slightly surreal. It was really weird. It was really weird. And this, you shoot it three times. You shoot it with the guy in the green screen suit, the tennis ball, and then you shoot it alone, pretending to speak to a penguin. With uh, this movie, you have to wear the costume, the outfit. Yeah. What was it like wearing it for the first time? It was surreal, I think. When you see it all put together, it's weird. I've been told how to angle my hat. Yes. Everything has to be just Jaunty so. Jaunty I mean, it was a long hair, longest hair and makeup of my life. Because I'd come in not looking practically perfect. As I expected, Mary Poppins practically perfect in every way and then I'd have to look that way for the rest of the day. So it was also not just the hair and makeup, but it was the preservation of the practically perfection. I was wearing smocks and sort of nets and shields and clips, and, and then my children would come on set and my baby would throw up on me, you know, it was that kind of thing, where people would be like, oh my God, you know. Anytime, anytime my baby was on set, I think costume were like, you know. Clear up on our Emily. <laughs> exactly. What are the practicalities of flying in on a kite? Well, trying to sort of um, submarine any fear that you have of heights, which I thought I was really good with, and then I was up there and I thought, I don't think I am. I think I was wrong about that. I thought I had that skill and it has left me. <laughs> um, so you just hang there and hope for the best, really. I've made a huge mistake. I've made a huge mistake. Onwards. <laughs> Onwards, yeah. <laughs> How did you find the voice? You know, it's the time period, so it's the 30s, so I listened to some... Princess Margaret. Her deepest instincts were the care and protection of the sick. And I also watched his girl Friday, Rosalind Russell, who just comes in like a bloody tornado. Oh, and wonderful. she's so exciting to yeah. watch and witty and fast. Now get this, you double-crossing chimpanzee. There ain't gonna be any interview and there ain't gonna be any story. And that certified check of yours is leaving with me in 20 minutes. I wouldn't cover the burning of Rome for you if they were just lighting it up. And if I ever lay my two eyes on you again, I'm gonna walk right up to you and hammer on that monkey skull of yours till it rings like a Chinese gong. You, you, you can't breathe watching her, she's so um, sprightly and quick. So I think I wanted that, that's um, practically perfect poshness. Do you really think so? Pee, the, pee, pee. the trouble is, is you found the voice, you got it, great. Now I have to sing in it. Yes. Fantastic. No, it's easier for me though, because if I have to sing in my own voice, I, get, I feel more inhibited. I suspect, and I'm never incorrect, that you're far too old to give in to imagination. I quite like singing as her. It's that English rock star trick. There you go. American accent. I know, what is that? I thought Green Day were British, by the way, for the longest time. It's like we switch it. I feel like when Brits mm -hmm. sing as Americans and Americans want to sound like Brits. I think Americans want to sound like Brits trying to sound like Americans. That's it. Now you've nailed it. Nailed it. When you were doing the shoot and you came back home and you're speaking to your family, what were your answers to the question, how was your day? 
I was like, I danced with penguins. <laughs> Not a big deal. Just like any other job, you know. I appreciate this, it's fine. Yes. But also, I've accidentally brought back the umbrella from work, and now there's a talking... Parrot umbrella. So there we is. did have, we had the regular umbrellas, and we had the animatronic umbrella that did sort of wink and talk and move and... Oh, I wish I could have stolen that one. I stole one of the other ones. Well, don't you care? Practically perfect people never permit sentiment to muddle their thinking. What I love about that is that you're obviously going to have it in your house in private place somewhere, but you could never use it because somebody will go, yes, we know, Emily. You're Mary Poppins. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, because I love to lord it over people <laughs> as if no one's talking about it. <laughs> This? It's very important I remind people <laughs> that I'm Mary Poppins as I'm like emblazoned on buses. What is your favourite Dick Van Dyke story? Oh, super kind of Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. If you say it loud enough, you'll always have a conscious. Super kind of I Actually, one of my favourite things he said to me was at the LA premiere. We were walking along and he said, I think people are looking at me and they can't believe I'm still alive. I was like, oh, thank God you are. <laughs> I didn't hit you with a cane, did I? He would be one of those people where I don't know, I've never met him, but I would probably hug him. Oh, you have to. Yeah. He's magical. With me. Oh, he's magical. And those blue eyes, those iconic blue eyes, you just want to, like, stare at him. You look fine too, Bert. What were your biggest fears when you first took on the role? You said, I'm going to do this. Yeah. I'm ready, but... Try and approach her as I would any other role, you know, just approach her as fearlessly as possible. Sort of the white, allow it to be white noise. Everyone gasping at me when I said I was playing Mary Poppins, everyone goes, oh! you know, and that can't help but sort of permeate you after a while. I was like, oh my God, you know, this is like, you feel like you're meddling with like the Holy Grail. I don't know, I was so thrilled by her and that sort of overtook any fear after yeah. a while. Did it feel a little bit like you were telling people, I'm James Bond? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Did it get to the stage where you wanted to stop telling people because people kept overreacting? Yes. Yes, I had one friend to say to me, oh, dude, you got balls of steel. Of all the sequences, the songs, the dances, what was your favourite to do and what was the most difficult? I will say my favourite was Trip A Little Light Fantastic. Here we go. Playback! Who wouldn't want to dance with 30 lamplighters? Quite right. A dream. It's been mm -hmm. a dream. It's, it is a hashtag life goal. Absolutely. Bucket list. Um, bucket list done to get lifted in the air by a bunch of men. Incredible coincidence, really. But And then the hardest was cover is not the book because of the animation and it was green screen. <sighs> yes. You know. You know. I you knew which know. one I was going to say. I was thinking it might be the upside down. No, because we weren't upside down. Because you weren't upside down. Well, I shouldn't say that. Are you telling me this is all a lie? Well, no one looks good upside down. Meryl and I had that conversation. And we were like, we won't actually be upside down. Because it's not a good look on anyone. It's just veins. Mm -hmm. And the skin starts to hang in strange places. So I don't want to highlight this too much, but we live in a world where you more than I can say, <gasps> Meryl and I. Meryl and I. Me and Mez. <laughs> <laughs> The Merrillator, yeah! Just Merrillator. We go way back, know, come on. Okay, my final question is, what would you tell Emily Blunt before she took on this role? What advice would you give her? Who cares? Just do it. That's advice for life. There you go. In, that, I really, that is my motto. In, who cares? In any situation, get on with it. Who cares? Get on with it, who cares what people think? And then just don't get too freaked out when you're flying on an Exactly. Flight. Thank you for the reminder. Everything is possible. Even the impossible. Lovely to see you. I hope you feel better. You're a wonder. Thank you so much. You're a wonder. <laughs> You're a wonder. It was the PPP Poshness. Thanks for watching. If you like that, then do watch these videos or you can listen to my podcast called Radio One Screen Time. Oh, and do not forget to hit that subscribe button. You can now get more Radio One in your life by downloading the BBC Sounds app or the BBC iPlayer app. Search for full-length versions of these interviews by typing in Movies with Ali Plum.